Vienna, Austria. Jimmy's favorite city in Europe because I spent a month here studying abroad, so I'm a little biased, but it is my favorite. So here's what you should know, here's the bottom line. $75 average nightly cost for lodging, transportation, $2.40 for a tram ticket, that's one way. You really only need to use that to get to Schönbrunn, which is one of the palaces on the outer edge of the city. Other than that, you can walk around. So what do you do in Vienna? You go to the palaces, you go to the museums. If you wanna go through all of them and see them and go inside, we recommend three days minimum, but you can actually see all of the notable palaces in one day, which is what you see in this video. And the last thing is they have a ball season here, like wear a fairy tale gown and a tuxedo and dance like your royalty. You can look that up online, but I think it's one of the only cities that's like a real big deal, so you should do that. Schönbrunn Palace. You have to come see this palace because it's gorgeous. Built in the 1600s, 1700s, they kept remodeling and adding. It was essentially a wedding gift for Maria Theresa. It's built in a neoclassical architectural style. The palace itself, very pretty, very beautiful, but the gardens that they built around this, I think, are more impressive. And then you have this kind of facade thingy up here on the top of the hill. It's worth it to climb the hill to get the view of the palace and all of Vienna and the cathedral out there on the horizon. Um, it's not a very difficult climb. Also, you should walk around the gardens because they're really pretty. And when they stood up these gardens, they added like pheasants and fowls and wild boars and stuff like that so they could do some hunting on the grounds to make it a summer retreat. This palace was a summer retreat. They'd come here and hang out and have tea, the Habsburgs, by the way, and they would talk about which region of Europe they should conquer next. I mean, there is a beautiful palace here, but have you seen the leaves? They're gorgeous here. Schönbrunn is a photographer's dream, but if you want to do more than just walk around and see the gardens, then there's also a zoo you can visit and a labyrinth. We did the labyrinth in 2008. It was a lot of fun. The thing I like about this place is that it's so large that regardless of how many people are here at the crowd, you can always find something that's like a little secluded like this garden. And it's so cool because you've got it to yourself and it's so beautiful. And the palace is there. And then there's statues. And it's beautiful outside. And there's birds. And the blue skies are blue and beautiful. Life is good. St. Stephen's Cathedral in the heart of the heart of the center of Vienna and the inner old city, built in the 1100s, rebuilt over the old churches, actually finished in the form you see it now in the 1300s. It is a gorgeous cathedral. Um, if you go on TripAdvisor, one of the first reviews when you walk in is people say the first thing they say is, oh my God, because it's so pretty inside. And I'm not sure that we've been inside, but I think we're certainly gonna go inside. It's pretty and you're gonna see it no matter what. So you should probably go inside. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. The organ makes it sound extra gothic. middle of your day. If you're tired of walking around, you need a break. Maybe before or after seeing St. Stephen's Cathedral, you can come to this little bar hotel restaurant, Doe & Co. Doe & Co? I'm pretty sure it's Doe & Co. Um, they have a bar that has floor to ceiling windows and you get an amazing view of the cathedral and not a bad deal on their drinks. And it's just pretty nice to hang out and just chill, take a rest break.
the Hofburg Palace. It's not really a palace, it's actually a palatial complex because it's multiple palaces spread out. It's been the seat of power for the Austrian emperors since they were emperors. And what's nice about it is it's like right in the heart of Vienna, so it's kind of hard not to see it, but when you approach it, there's this grand entrance. There's lots of um, horse-drawn carriages everywhere that you might want to take a ride in. You might not, depends on how you feel about that kind of thing. And it extends all the way back. It's asymmetrical, like I said, multiple different palaces built on. So like the library, there's wine cellars, there's now, most of it's just museums now. It's really impressive, but what I like about it is it's the most accessible palace, if you will, since it's like right here in the middle of the city. Um, and she's very pretty. Hot dog. I don't think it's too, um, like, light. So the Nash Market is right outside the Ringstrasse, which is the ring road around Vienna. Every city has a market. This is the biggest market in Vienna. We go to all the markets in pretty much every city. Some of them aren't very good. We don't actually show them to you. This one looks to be pretty neat. So we're gonna walk around and see what's up. And if it's if it's cool and worth your time, it'll make it into the video. If not, I'm recording this for no reason. But so far, it seems pretty neat. Maggie got a scarf. And we're just here to get some food. It's been around since the 1500s and um, over 100 vendors, I believe. This is a donor kebab. These are big in Europe, but especially in Germany, Austria. So it's a Middle Eastern food, Turkish. It originated from a Turkish immigrant in Berlin. He's the guy that started making them this way. You get it with chicken, lamb, or beef. A little spicy, there's like some yogurt sauce. Had one of these pretty much every day for a month when I studied here. And you should try one. You can definitely get one at the market. So that's what's great about Vienna. This was not even on our list to visit today. This is. Carl's Church, it's a cathedral from the 1700s. It's extremely pretty, there's a concert tonight, and there's a man over there playing Despacito on the clarinet. That's what makes Vienna awesome. You walk around, you see stuff like this, you stumble upon it. A short walk from St. Stephen's Cathedral is the Opera House, the Vienna Opera House. It's really nice, I've been inside. 11 years ago, there was an opera here when I was studying abroad, and it said to wear uh, business casual, and as a 20 year old, I didn't know what that meant, so I brought a polo from Old Navy. Luckily a classmate had a dress shirt and a tie I could wear and I got to see the opera. It's very nice, I do recommend it if you have time. The Belvedere is a palace that is within the city of Vienna. What's nice about the Belvedere is unlike the other palaces, of which there are many, of which we've shown you in this video, the Belvedere has some gardens, some grounds surrounding it, even though it's in the city, in the middle of the city. It's not as large and vast as the Schönbrunn as far as the gardens go, but it is very beautiful. You can get tickets to go inside the lower Belvedere and the upper Belvedere if you so choose, but it is completely free to walk around these very impressive gardens, of which there's a ton of people doing, just walking and running and having a great time and taking pictures in this lovely golden hour. So we highly suggest that you visit the Belvedere. And the Kiss is here. Oh, Maggie says the Kiss by Gustav Klimt is within the Upper Belvedere, I believe. Also, the name Atreyu. Does that name mean anything to you, Atreyu? It does to Alicia. It's not related to this building at all, but yeah. Guys, thanks for watching our video on Vienna. Next, we're going to Budapest, and if you haven't already seen our video on Prague, you should check that out too, because you can couple all three of these cities together and make an epic Eastern Europe experience. Like and subscribe. Okay, bye. <laughs>